Hi there, I'm Mike, and with that for you today is my very first, very special Patreon-sponsored episode. This episode comes to you on behalf of Jeffrey Stubbs, part of the Aussie Sci-Fi Collectibles Group. The only stipulation I gave for this tier is that you can request anything that I own to review. He didn't request a specific figure, but he did request that I wear a nipply shirt, which I'm gonna do my best to get them out. He requested the pictures that I take use the new diorama I got from my friend Hi. And he also requested that I didn't sacrifice any time with my wife. We've already had dinner, we had a good evening, and she's watching the Great British Baking Show. So I'm recording a video, and I'm recording Star Wars The Black Series, Dr. Aphra. Go ahead and take a look at the picture of her while I read the bio on the back of the box. On a mission gone wrong, Dr. Aphra finds herself at the hands of the formidable Sith Lord, Darth Vader, a rare survivor of such meetings Aphra is recruited by Vader for her skills in reprogramming droids and her apparent lack of remorse for breaking the law to get what she wants. And here she is out of the package. If you're watching this and thinking, I have no idea who that is, you're not alone. I mean, I knew who she was, but that's because I read the Star Wars Marvel comics, the new ones that started in 2015. So far, Dr. Aphra, to my knowledge, has only appeared in the comics. She first appeared in the Darth Vader comic, and since then, she has got her own comic. Since her very first appearance, I honestly have been smitten with her. She's just a really cool character. She's basically Indiana Jones, but if he just didn't give a shit. So starting off the review with her looks, it's gonna be really hard to gauge that because like I said, so far she's only appeared in the comics. Due to artist interpretation, her appearance is somewhat fluid, even with the same artist. Sometimes she looks different. She's wearing her typical Dr. Afra outfit, regular shirt, vest, pants, boots. What she's doing is she's basically just wearing the generic smuggler outfit, but it works for her. I like it. It's a good look. It's very Star Wars-y. One thing that's been constant with Dr. Aphra's appearance is she does have Asian features, which is great, and they are translated here. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of is where in the comic her face is traditionally a little bit more skinny and long. This face is a little bit more squat and wide. I can look at this and still know this is supposed to be Dr. Aphra as a person who's read Dr. Aphra comics. So it's not like she doesn't look like Dr. Aphra, but she also kind of doesn't really look like Dr. Aphra, at least not in the face, not to me. There's also something about her looks that I just can't quite put my finger on. It looks very, very familiar. But due to the fact that I just don't feel like her face is quite there of what we get in the comic, I'm gonna give her looks a half a point. Moving on to her accessories, she doesn't come with much. In fact, her box says she comes with two, I guess. One of my biggest gripes is she does come with her hat, which she wears all the time in the comic. She's very rarely seen not wearing it. It comes packaged separately in there. I mean, they could have just packaged it with her wearing it, but I feel like they wanted you to feel like you were getting more for buying her. So they were like, oh, look, it's an extra accessory. It's her hat. I mean, they might as well have packaged her vest separately to give you a third accessory. It's fine, it's a removable hat, which is always fun to get in the Black Series line. The hat itself is, it's like a flight hat, like a flight goggle, skull cap, I don't know what they're calling it, but it's molded and painted and weathered. It's got a good wash or patina on it to make it look leathery and worn. I definitely like it. The goggles are sculpted on, so they're not movable. They have a nice silver paint to make them look reflective. It does fit on her head just fine. Although it's part of the reason why when she's wearing her, her head looks a little wider than not because it doesn't do her any favors. It definitely exaggerates the wideness of her face. Since I talked about her removable hat, I might as well talk about her removable vest. Uh, the vest is, well, she's wearing it. It comes off, it's molded and it looks good, but I don't recommend taking it off because it looks wrong. Her only other accessory is her lone blaster pistol. This is like a, I don't know what it's called. It definitely looks, very Han Solo-esque, but without the viewfinder. So it's like a DL-44. It's molded in a light gray plastic, which I'm not a fan of. It just doesn't look right. I don't like it when they mold weapons in that gray plastic. It doesn't match the rest of the weapons. Guns are typically black, so I just, I don't like that. But they did paint the muzzle silver, so at least it has some paint on it. I'm not a huge fan of the way this one looks. It does fit in her hand. She has a molded trigger finger, so I like the way that looks. It also fits right into her holster very, very easily. Sometimes holsters can feel a little iffy. We're gonna break the blaster trying to get it in there. This is not the case. In fact, it may come in and out a little too easily. One other little fun fact about the gun, it's actually the same gun that comes with Jaina Solo. I really don't have anything else to say about that, but it's a fun fact. 
I honestly don't know what else she could have come with. I'm always up for more hands. Having alternate hands really adds to the value of figures, gives them different posing options. It would be cool if they had thought of other stuff to give her, but it's not the end of the world, I guess. I do feel like she's just a little sparse, like this is it. This is all we get right here in my hand. This is everything. So despite not coming with a lot, I also don't really know what else she could have come with. So I'm gonna dock her a little bit. I'm gonna give her a 0.75 in accessories. I do wish that the gun had some more paint on it, or it was at least molded in a black. But other than that, it's really not that awful. Let's go ahead and move on to articulation. Her head moves side to side. It moves forward this far, back this far. It's kind of stopped by the hair. Her arm moves out this far. It moves all the way around. She has a 90 degree bend at her elbow, as well as a swivel. She has a swivel at her wrist, as well as a hinge. She has a mid torso swivel. It moves forward a little bit, but she also has an extra crunch here, and that moves forward a lot further and pretty far back. Her leg moves forward this far, back this far, upper thigh swivel, a double jointed knee, a hinge at the ankle, as well as a rocker. With this being Dr. Afra's widest stance with both their feet flat on the ground. So all in all, she moves pretty well. Some places that I'm not a huge fan of, her elbows could use some wider range of articulation. They have a pretty good cut, but they still only bend to the 90 degree angle, and I would like a little bit more movement there. She's also lacking a couple of the newer joints, like the butterfly joint that newer characters have come with. I only really mention that because she's wearing a vest, and Hasbro tends to put more unsightly joints, like butterfly joints or double jointed elbows, when they're covered up. So since she's wearing a vest, I thought this would have been a good opportunity to hide a butterfly joint to give her a little bit more movement. She's also a little hindered on her right leg here, just because the holster is glued to the leg. It's not that bad, but I am a little wary of bending it too far and breaking it. I'm not a big fan of when they're glued to the leg. I do like it if they're just kind of free floating or pegged in so I can unpeg them if I wanna get a crazy stance going on. But that's really it for the bad. The good is we do have this really cool extra cut right in the waist. A cut we've only seen one other time in the line and that was in Jaina Solo. I really wish that Hasbro would do this cut more. I mean, you have the torso joint and that's fine, but it's always cool when you get a little bit more movement in there. It gives you some extra options for different display possibilities. But because I do have a couple little nitpicks, I'm gonna dock it just a little bit to 0.75. Next, we're moving on to paint, sculpt, and detail. I've already talked about the face. While I don't think the face looks good, the face sculpt and the paint look fantastic. Her hair is also pretty well sculpted, which has been kind of hit or miss lately in the Black Series. So I'm, I'm glad to say that the hair here looks pretty good. I even like how it's sculpted over the eye. Her shirt is molded and painted. It's even kind of dirtied up to make it look worn. Her right arm has like a circuitry tattooed. She has that in the comics, so it's good they put that here. It's very sharply and precisely painted on. There's really not a lot of paint bleed anywhere. Her hands are sculpted properly and they're wearing fingerless gloves at the end, which they must for 80s break dancers and, you know, Star Wars smugglers. Her pants are fine. There's nothing to write home about. There's some weird seam lines in there. Her boots are also pretty good, but what I really like about this is her belt. The belt is fantastic. It is sculpted really nice. It's got buckles sculpted and painted. It's got pouches sculpted and painted. It even has a hook, like a lightsaber hook. Something about that lightsaber hook just makes this look so familiar. Jaina Solo, what are you doing here? I see what's going on here. They're the same figure. Barring the arms and the head, these are exactly the same figure. At first I was like, oh, they probably reused some parts, but nope. The torso, the legs, the boots, the butt, everything is the same. If you look at her shirt and her pants, she has seams molded into there that they're not painted. Whereas on here, those are the seams of her like flight suit. So instead of getting us a really cool, unique mold for a very cool character in the comics, you're just gonna basically take a figure you've already made and just repaint it completely. To my knowledge, that's the first time this has happened in the Black Series line, at least to a figure that's not a generic template, like a trooper. Part of me wants to dock it just for the audacity and the laziness of what they've done here. But at the same time, I honestly didn't notice it right away. Like I knew that they looked similar, but it wasn't until I really got deep down and looked at all the molding and the seam lines that I realized that they were 80%, no, more than that, 90% the same figure. So, I mean, it's a repaint, yeah, but it's honestly kind of a really well done repaint. If it was a choice between having a repaint figure for Dr. Afra or no Dr. Afra, 
I'm gonna choose a Dr. Afra because I like Dr. Afra. And if they are gonna repaint a character, they may as well use basically one of my favorite figures in the entire line, which is Jaina Solo. It's got a fantastic sculpt. It's very interesting, very well proportioned. So yeah, it's lazy, but at the same time, it works. But despite that, I'm only gonna dock it a little bit just because I do think it's a very good and clever use of the Jaina Solo mold. So I'm gonna give her a 0.75. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about want and availability. Is is the want there? Absolutely. I love obscure Star Wars characters. And while she is part of a major comic and she's not super obscure, I pretty much consider anything that's not from the major multi-billion dollar movies that have been made over the years, obscure. The average person isn't gonna know who Dr. Aphra is. And that's a shame because she is a really good character. So yeah, I want more characters like this. Characters from the comics characters from cartoons, characters from video games. I love that it flushes out my collection. I have enough Luke Skywalkers and Rays to fill up an entire shelf just with those two characters. I love having other unique looking figures to kind of fill out the background. In terms of availability, she's part of the normal line. She's number 87 in the line. The line has been pretty easy to find in general in Targets, Walmarts, and GameStops. You could probably even find her online pretty easily. But I guess the big point here is she was an exclusive. Like if you didn't get her, it's because you didn't want to. So because of all that, I'm gonna give her the full point for want and availability. That leads us to a final score of 3.75 out of five. She's not perfect. Hasbro did just repurpose an already existing Black Series figure into a completely different one. And once you find that out, a little bit of the magic is kind of lost. But ultimately, I don't care that much. She is really good. She's a character I wanted, and I'm glad that she's on my shelf. So if you're a fan of lesser known Star Wars characters, or you just want some more girls in your sausage fest of a Star Wars collection, I honestly recommend picking her up. She looks great, especially when she's on the shelf with her two murder bot friends. So that's it for my very first Patreon sponsor review. Thank you again to Jeffrey Stubbs. Jeffrey Stubbs is a member of the Aussie Sci-Fi Collectibles Group. They're a group of people, obviously in Australia, who work together to help collectors find the figures they're looking for. They seem like a really good group of people. What's up, Aussie Sci-Fi Collectibles? How you guys doing? If you want to sponsor one, go ahead and visit my Patreon page. I'd like to thank all of these other Patreon supporters as well because without them, I wouldn't be able to do this segment of the video, I guess. If Patreon isn't your thing, but you do want to support the channel, there are a couple different ways down in the downstairs area. Go ahead and check that out below. There might be some ways that help you out as well. As always, if you want to comment and tell me what you thought of this episode, do you have Afra? Do you not care about her? Do you want to get her? Let me know down in the comments below. I love to read and respond to every one of those comments. It also does help the channel out if you would like, share, subscribe, hit that bell, all of that stuff. I know it sounds silly to say, but it really does help out. And that's it. Thanks so much for getting this far, and I'll see you later. Bye.